Hi guys, and welcome to another batch of your replays as I dig into the archives and drag up some replays that you guys have sent me months and months and months ago. I have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of replays. This one's going all the way back to 9.3. Uh, it was a game sent in by Austin W. in his tortoise, the tier 9 British TD. And um, I'm not a big fan of the tortoise. I find it because the AT-15 is actually one of my favorite tanks in game. I was expecting great things from the tortoise and it really has let me down. Uh, mainly down to that huge, huge commander's cupola. It's not even a commander's cupola, but that very, very large viewport on the right hand side of the tank. I mean, if you don't know that it's a weak spot by now, well, then you've been playing a different game. Um, there are two problems with that particular weak spot. One, it's very, very easy to hit. Especially when you're going hull down, you think your tank is hidden, but you're exposing that weak spot. But the other problem with that particular weak spot is a loader sits in there. So even though the tortoise has a great gun, amazing DPM, anyone shooting you through the uh, big turret on top of the tank takes out your loader every single time. Anyway, we are here on Himmelsdorf. Austin W is uh, going to be working the hill. As per usual, haven't seen these replays, but the end results look amazing, and he's moved up. And the tortoise has surprisingly good uh, gun depression, and Austin's put one shot into the T-54E1. There we go. T-71 hits a viewport, goes for that uh, cupola. But uh, Austin is going to be working around the church. This is actually a good idea in this particular matchup. Ooh, unfortunate to bounce there. Um, the reason I'm saying it's a good idea in this particular matchup is there's no RT. Ooh, I think that Pershing saved Austin from taking a shot there. Um, and ooh, lovely shot on the object 416. Lots of potential targets here poking the corner. And Austin's trying to get his gun down. And you notice Austin is a very good player. He's going for track shots. He's not letting that T-32 move anywhere. And his rate of fire on the tortoise is enough to be able to keep this T-32 tracked. But in the meantime, an ST-1 pokes the corner. And this Pershing, the friendly Pershing in front of uh, Austin, is actually hiding Austin's uh, turret, his uh, weak spot. 416 manages to sneak a shot into that weak spot, though. So Austin's lost his cover. And you can see that the ST-1... There we go, 416 and ST1 both put shots into that view bar, into the turret, takes out his loader. There goes Austin's first aid kit to put his loader back in, but holy cow, Austin's up to 4k damage already. Wow. The armor held up, the friendly Pershing was protecting his weak spots, and it let Austin just open up with this gun. I haven't even talked about the gun, the match is so action-packed. So he's ignoring the tanks around the church. There's a Borsig moving in, gets a shot into the T-71. T-44, oh, he does have shots. Okay, there's kill number two. He's up to 4.7k damage. The gun on this tank is amazing. 259 millimeters of penetration, 400 alpha damage, and a reload of six seconds. Oh, really unfortunate not to get a kill on the KV-5. Bounces on the KV-5, troll armor. And he's using his gun depression, pops down, shoots the 416 again. 5k damage done. So he's moving up, T95 needs to be careful, but he goes for the kill on the T54E1, takes him out for kill number three. And all of the enemy tanks are on low health, but he's focusing on the higher health tanks, the T95. 416 is trying to side scrape, and Austin hides that turret. Another beautiful shot into the T-95. Okay, he's been tracked. Unfortunately, can't get a shot in the 416, but the 416 moves in front of his gun. Another really unfortunate hit. Tracks the 416 for zero damage. T-54 is no problems. Four kills for Austin. 6.4k damage. This game is only four and a half minutes old. So he's moving up. He wants to kill the T-95 before he can get away. Unfortunately, he doesn't manage a hit. KV-5 is playing a dangerous game, underestimating the reload, and there we go, there's kill number 5. One more kill needed for Top Gun. 
Austin, again, focusing on this T-95, takes him out, there's Top Gun, there's almost 7k damage done, 416 bounces on the uh, weak spot, and Austin's finally able to move forward, so that tortoise reload so damn quick, tortoise raped us, enemy team in, in chat, there's kill number 7, uh, he's on a Radley's just Two, three tanks left on the enemy team. Needs to kill this object for the Radleys. Unfortunately, no shots. Wasn't able to get a kill on the Radleys. So, just two, just one enemy tank left. Unfortunately, he's an IS-3 and he's down on the other side of the map. There's no way Austin's going to be able to get a shot in. Austin is thanking the enemy team for telling him he had amazing, an amazing game. Wow, 4.3k, or 7.3k damage, 7 kills in just under 6 minutes. There's the end of the game. That, folks, is what the tortoise is capable of doing when you uh, don't expose your turret. So not surprisingly, that was an ace tanker for Austin W, and I'm really disappointed because I haven't managed an ace in my tortoise yet, but I haven't had an opportunity as good as that game presented. Um, it was nice there were no arty in play, but he picked up a steel wall, bounced a lot of shots, picked up Top Gun, really unfortunate not to get the Radleys, and he also picked up High Caliber. He finished top on XP with 1684, 7,352 damage, and 7 kills in just inside 6 minutes. Amazing game, well done. Uh, 27 shots fired, 24 hits, and 23 penetrations. The gun on the tortoise is very, very good really has a reload that a lot of people underestimate and when you're allowed just to keep on firing and firing you can build up damage really really quick as I say I haven't had an opportunity to do that yet but his armor held up because he was for a lot of that game able to hide that machine gun turret on top of his tank uh, 19 hits received 10 penetrations, 9 bounces. Uh, he spotted 1, damaged 9, destroyed 7, and he did uh, earned 48,000 credits with a premium account. It wasn't his first game of the day, but 2,526 XP, again, with a premium account. Um, that is a replay all the way back from 9.3. I still have 9.3 and 9.2 replays. I'm getting there, folks. I will get there eventually, but I don't think I'm ever going to catch up to the amount of replays I'm getting, as opposed to the amount of replays I can record. Uh, so it's getting to be look whether or not I pick out your replay at this stage. But uh, thank you for sending that in a long, long time ago, Austin W. And sorry, I haven't gotten around to it before now. And if you thought 9.3 was quite a long time to drag up a replay from, this is a replay that was sent in all the way back from 9.2. Um, Neilon Travels, a regular uh, player on the channel. But uh, Neilon sent this one back in 9.2, and I'm only getting around to it now. It's another British TD. Didn't know it was Neilon till I dragged it up, but uh, this was her first ace tanker, according to the information sent in with the replay. And it's a nice matchup. Neilon is top tier. It's a tier 6 game. We are here on Fisherman's Bay. Let's increase the size of the map. And as per usual, I know the end result, but I haven't seen the game. So, um, Churchill Gun Carrier, yeah. I think Neilon was playing this tank in 9.2, and as a result, she challenged me to get the Ace Tanker in the tank. Neilon was the reason I originally rebought the Churchill Gun Carrier, and I think it was because she was able to uh, share the pain and misery of playing this tank with me. No camo on the Churchill gun carrier, but I think the camo rating on this tank sucks anyway. Don't know how much help a camo job on this tank would do. But it uh, looks as if she's doing the standard TD thing. She's going to be working the one two lines. Her ta team are down one tank already. And not a lot to shoot at, so Churchill Gun Carrier said it in my Ace Tanker video. I think it's a tank that really, really benefits in it from a, a situation where the enemy tanks come to you. It's not really a tank you go hunting enemy tanks in. Okay, AT2 in the distance. And a T49. Enemy 
Neilon goes for the AT2, even though she did have a kill on the uh, T49. No outline showing up, and the AT2 dies before she gets a shot in. So uh, it's a really, really good gun on the Churchill gun carrier. It is 214 millimeters of penetration. 250 alpha damage and a pretty decent rate of fire of 7.3 seconds for Neilon. As you can see, 254 alpha damage done with that shot on the SU-85. So it is a good gun, it's just unfortunate that the platform the gun is on is not very good. So there's her first kill. Again, a little bit sad, it's an older replay, outlines are not showing up, but uh, Things are looking even at the moment, his score is 3-4. And Neilon's just waiting for targets of opportunity. So gets a shot in on the VK and bounces. Really unfortunate to bounce, don't know where that must have hit, and hit the KV, or the uh, VK. But she's moving back, she's trying to keep solid bush cover between herself and enemy tanks. And as I say, the one thing that re well, a lot of things disappointed me about this tank. Ooh, ELC. Enemy but its camo engaged. rating was a major thing that let me down, or I was disappointed with. She's got a shot. Takes out the T-3485 for kill number two. And... She's deciding to relocate to see if she can get shots on the Chihi. But unfortunately, the one tank that was down in the dip on the one line, the ELC, has died. And it doesn't look as if she's going to get any shots on the Chihi. So, as I say, the maneuverability of this tank, not good. The armor, not good. The uh, camo rating on the tank is not good. Really, about the only major positives the Churchill gun carrier has is a very, very good gun depression and a very, very good gun. So again, Neilon's moving back into position. She does have shots on the cheek. Gets one shot in, sets him on fire. There is kill number three, but she has to have been spotted. And yeah, okay. So we now know there's a Wolverine at Type 32 T-34s in front of her. And a VK-3601H. So Dicker Max is taking fire. So she's moved back again. She's trying to put solid bush cover in between her and the VK. Not enough bush cover here. She was spotted. She's just taken more damage. The armor on this tank is terrible. She's going for another shot. She does have a... I have no idea. Oh, that must have hit the wreck. She's going for the lower glacis on the VK, and because this is a 9.2 replay, the lower glacis on German tanks will set them on fire. But I think she hit the wreck there. So T-34 is advancing. Great shot into his track. Tracks him in place. T-34 misses. So she's going to get the kill. Aims carefully. Takes him out for kill number four. Now, in all the time I was talking and spectating, I've just realized... Her team have collapsed. Her team... Oh, now, yeah, okay, they've obviously collapsed. They're being capped. So all the tanks that went into town are dead. I completely missed that. I tunnel vision did not see that happening. So it's three versus seven enemy tanks at the moment. We know there's a Wolverine and a T-34 to Neilon's right, but we also know there are tanks coming from spawn. Someone th drove through cap. So Dicker Max is moving up, using his gun depression, and a KV-1S. Now, this is a 9.2 replay, so that's a very, very dangerous KV-1S. It's got the 122mm, and KV-1S misses. So Neilon needs to move in. She needs to kill the KV-1S quickly before anyone else appears. Hellcat has appeared, and unfortunately could have done with a much, much higher roll. Needs to kill loads of Hellcat here as well. KV-2 has appeared to her left. Hellcat puts a shot in. She misses a shot in the Hellcat. I can sense the panic here. She really needed to kill the Hellcat. And the Hellcat takes out the T-34. So now there's just a KV-2 as he fired. This looks to be the end. KV-2's moving in for a ram. So Neilon gets one shot in. Reverses to reduce the ram damage. Is she going to reload before the KV-2? She is. Now she needs to turn and deal with the KV-1S. Oh, no. There's... Tanks shooting her from the uh, one line. Okay, so 
A team collapse and a last ditch defense by Neilon netted her 5 kills and 2.5k recorded damage in XVM. So as I say, always sucks to get an ace tanker on a defeat and that was Neilon Travel's first ace tanker in her Churchill gun carrier. Ace tanker and high caliber on a defeat. Uh, she finished top on XP with 1018 or 1018 XP, 2552 damage and 5 kills. It was just a shame she had a team collapse. She could have had a much, much bigger game. Although you can argue that maybe if her team hadn't collapsed, maybe she wouldn't have been able to do as much damage. Um, yeah, it's always a 50-50. Uh, so 17 shots fired, 14 hits, 14 penetrations. The gun on the Churchill gun carrier is really, really good. And as I say, it does have really, really good gun depression. So it is a hill warrior, but you just got to try and stay hidden because the armor doesn't work, the camo rating doesn't work, and it's not a mobile tank, which means that you really, really have to hope enemy tanks come to you as opposed to you going to them. Uh, she received seven hits and two actually bounced, but uh, five penetrations. She damaged nine, destroyed five. Um, didn't notice whether or not she was firing any premium ammo, but... Uh, didn't make a large profit, still made a profit of 10,000 credits with a premium account. 1527 XP, not the first game of the day, but uh, still a very, very decent game. And uh, nice to see people doing well in tanks that aren't very good. And a Churchill gun carrier really isn't very good. I can see why Neilon challenged me so long ago. So as I say, drag that one up from... 9.2 apologize it's take um, i apologize neil on it's taken me so long to get to it uh but as always i hope you guys at home enjoyed watching i'll see you next time